Hello there, everyone. Welcome to another lovely night of readings. Actually, it's afternoon right now. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen now. The woman with two skins. Ayamba, the first of Kalaba, was a very powerful king. He fought and conquered all the surrounding countries, killing all the old men and women. But the able-bodied men and girls he caught and brought back as slaves, and they worked on the farms until they died. The king had 200 wives, but none of them had borne a son to him. His subjects, seeing that he was becoming an old man, begged him to marry one of the spider's daughters, as they always had plenty of children. But when the king saw the spider's daughter, he did not like her, as she was ugly. And the people said it was because her mother had so many children at the same time. However, in order to please his people, he married the ugly girl and placed her among his other wives. But they all complained because she was so ugly and said she could not live with them. The king, therefore, built her a separate house for herself where she was given food and drink, the same as the other wives. Everyone jeered at her on account of her ugliness. But she was not really ugly, but beautiful, as she was born with two skins. And at her birth, her mother was made to promise that she should never remove the ugly skin until a certain time arrived, save only during the night that she must put it on again before dawn. Now, the king's head wife knew this and was very fearful lest the king should find it out and fall in love with the spider's daughter. So she went to a juju man and offered him 200 rods to make a potion that would make the king forget altogether that the spider's daughter was his wife. This, the juju man finally consented to do after much haggling over the price for 350 rods. And he made up some medicine, which the head wife mixed with the king's food. For some months, this had the effect of making the king forget the spider's daughter. And he used to pass quite close to her without recognizing her in any way. When four months had elapsed and the king had not once sent for Adyaha, for that was the name of the spider's daughter, she began to get tired and went back to her parents. Her father, the spider, then took her to another juju man, who by making spells and casting lots, very soon discovered that it was the king's head wife who had made the juju and had enchanted the king so that he would not look at Adyaha. He therefore told the sp spider that Adyaha should give the king some medicine which he would prepare, which would make the king remember her. He prepared the medicine for which the spider had to pay a large sum of money. And that very day, Adyaha made a small dish of food into which she had placed the medicine and presented it to the king. Directly, he had eaten the dish, his eyes were opened and he recognized his wife and told her to come to him that very evening. So in the afternoon, being very joyful, she went down to the river and washed. And when she returned, she put on her best clothes, cloth and went to the king's palace. Directly it was dark and all the lights were out. She pulled off her ugly skin and the king saw how beautiful she was and was very pleased with her. But when the cock crowed, Adyaha pulled on her ugly skin again and went back to her own house. This she did for four nights running, always taking the ugly skin off in the dark and leaving before daylight in the morning. In course of time, to the great surprise of all the people, and particularly of the king's 200 wives, she gave birth to a son. But what surprised them most of all was that only one son was born, whereas her mother had always had a great many children at a time, generally about 50. The king's head wife became more jealous than ever when Adyaha had a son. 
So she went again to the juju man, and by giving him a large present, induced him to give her some medicine, which would make the king sick and forget his son. And the medicine would then make the king go to the juju man, who would tell him that it was his son who had made him sick, as he wanted to reign instead of his father. The juju man would also tell the king that if he wanted to recover, he must throw his son away into the water. And the king, when he had taken the medicine, went to the juju man, who told him everything as had been arranged with his head wife. But at first, the king did not want to destroy his son. Then his chief subjects begged him to throw his son away and said that perhaps in a year's time, he might get another son. So the king at last agreed and threw his son into the river at which the mother grieved and cried bitterly. Then the head wife went again to the juju man and got more medicine, which made the king forget Adyaha for three years, during which time she was in mourning for her son. She then returned to her father and he got some more medicine from his juju man which Adyaha gave to the king. And the king knew her and called her to him again, and she lived with him as before. Now the juju who had helped Adyaha's father, the spider, was a water juju, and he was ready when the king threw his son into the water and saved his life and took him home and kept him alive. And the boy grew up very strong. After a time, Adyaha gave birth to a daughter and her, the jealous wife, also persuaded the king to throw away. It took a long time to persuade him, but at last he agreed and threw his daughter into the water too and forgot Adyaha again. But the water juju was ready again, and when he had saved the little girl, he thought the time had arrived to punish the action of the jealous wife. So he went about amongst the head young men, and persuaded them to hold a wrestling match in the marketplace every week. This was done, and the water juju told the king's son, who had become very strong and was very like to his father in appearance, that he should go and wrestle, and that no one would be able to stand up before him. It was then arranged that there should be a grand wrestling match, to which all the strongest men in the country were invited, and the king promised to attend with his head wife. On the day of the match, the water juju told the king's son that he need not be in the least afraid and that his juju was so powerful that even the strongest and best wrestlers in the country would not be able to stand up against him for even a few minutes. All the people of the country came to see the great contest, to the winner of which the king had promised to present prizes of cloth and money, and all the strongest men came. Strongest men came. When they saw the king's son, whom nobody knew, they laughed and said, Who is this small boy? He can have no chance against us. But when they came to wrestle, they very soon found that they were no match for him. The boy was very strong indeed, beautifully made and good to look upon. And all the people were surprised to see how like he was to the king. After wrestling for the greater part of the day, the king's son was declared the winner, having thrown everyone who had stood up against him. In fact, some of his opponents had been badly hurt. Some of his opponents had been badly hurt and had their arms or ribs broken, broken, owing to the tremendous strength of the boy. After the match was over, the king presented him with cloth and money and invited him to dine with him in the evening. The boy gladly accepted his father's invitation, and after he had had a good wash in the river, put on his cloth and went up to the palace, where he found the head chiefs of the country and some of the king's most favored wives. They then sat down to their meal, and the king had his own son, whom he did not know, sitting next to him. On the other side of the boy sat the jealous wife, who had been the cause of all the trouble. All through the dinner, this woman did her best to make friends with the boy, with whom she had fallen violently in love on account of his beautiful appearance, his strength, and his being the best wrestler in the country. The woman thought to herself, 
I will have this boy as my husband, as my husband is now an old man and will surely soon die. The boy, however, who was as wise as he was strong, was quite aware of everything the jealous woman had done. And although he pretended to be very flattered at the advances of the king's head wife, he did not respond very readily and went home as soon as he could. When he returned to the water juju's house, he told him everything that had happened. And the water juju said, as you are now in high favor with the king, you must go to him tomorrow and beg a favor from him. The favor you will ask is that all the country shall be called together and that a certain case shall be tried. And that when the case is finished, the man or woman who is found to be in the wrong shall be killed by the Igbos before all the people. So the following morning, the boy went to the king, who readily granted his request, and at once sent all round the country, appointing a day for all the people to come in and hear the case tried. Then the boy went back to the water juju, who told him to go to his mother and tell her who he was, and that when the day of the trial arrived, she was to take off her ugly skin and appear in all her beauty, for the time had come when she need no longer wear it. This the son did. When the day of the trial arrived, Adiaha sat in a corner of the square, and nobody recognized the beautiful stranger as the spider's daughter. Her son then sat down next to her and brought his sister with him. Immediately, his mother saw her, she said, This must be my daughter, whom I have long mourned as dead, and embraced her most affectionately. The king and his dead wife then arrived and sat on their stones in the middle of the square, all the people saluting them with the usual greetings. The king then addressed the people and said that he had called them together to hear a strong palava at the request of the young man who had been the victor of the wrestling and who had promised that if the case went against him, he would offer up his life to the Igbo. The king also said that if on the other hand, the case was decided in the boy's favor. Then the other party would be killed, even though it were himself or one of his wives. Whoever it was would have to take his or her place on the killing stone and have their heads cut off by the egg bulls. To this, all the people agreed and said they would like to hear what the young man had to say. The young man then walked round the square and bowed to the king and the people and asked the question, am I not worthy to be the son of any chief in the country? And all the people answered, yes. The boy then brought his sister out into the middle, leading her by the hand. She was a beautiful girl and well-made. When everyone had looked at her, he said, is not my sister? worthy to be any chief's daughter. And the people replied that she was worthy of being anyone's daughter, even the king's. Then he called his mother Adyaha, and she came out looking very beautiful with her best cloth and beads on. And all the people cheered as they had never seen a finer woman. The boy then asked them, is this woman worthy of being the king's wife? And a shout went up from everyone present that she would be a proper wife for the king and looked as if she would be the mother of plenty of fine, healthy sons. Then the boy pointed out the jealous woman who was sitting next to the king and told the people his story, how that his mother, who had two skins, was the spider's daughter, how she had married the king and how the head wife was jealous and had made a bad juju for the king, which made him forget his wife. How she had persuaded the king to throw himself and his sister into the river, which as they all knew had been done. But the water juju had saved both of them and had brought them up. Then the boy said, I leave the king and all of you people to judge my case. If I have done wrong, let me be killed on the stone by the egg bulls. If on the other hand, the woman has done evil, then let the Igbos deal with her as you may decide. 
When the king knew that the wrestler was his son, he was very glad and told the Igbos to take the jealous woman away and punish her in accordance with their laws. The Igbos decided that the woman was a witch. So they took her into the forest and tied her up to a stake and gave her 200 lashes with a whip made from hippop hippopotamus hide and then burnt her alive so that she should not make any more trouble and her ashes were thrown into the river. The king then embraced his wife and daughter and told all the people that she, Adiaha, was his proper wife and would be the queen for the future. When the palava was over, Adiaha was dressed in fine clothes and beads and carried back in state to the palace by the king's servants. That night, the king gave a big feast to all his subjects and told them how glad he was to get back his beautiful wife, whom he had never known properly before, also his son, who was stronger than all men, and his fine daughter. The feast continued for 166 days, and the king made a law that if any woman was found out getting medicine against her husband, she should be killed at once. Then the king built three new compounds and placed many slaves in them, both men and women. One compound he gave to his wife, another to his son, and the third he gave to his daughter. They all lived together quite happily for some years until the king died, when his son came to the throne and ruled in his stead. All right, that was tonight's reading, this afternoon's reading. I look forward to reading for you another time. Goodbye.